Hey guys, you're surely Kevin Grace. I'm here in Washington, D.C., outside of the Capital One Arena. You may have heard the new news that the owner of the Capitals and the Wizards, Seth Leonsis, is planning to move his team to Virginia within the next couple of years. If you haven't heard the news, let's take a look at this news clip. A monumental move. The Caps and Wizards poised to pack up and cross the Potomac. The distance is short, but the consequences could not be greater. From the winners. We're looking forward to more games, more like livelihood in the neighborhood. This is monumental. To the apparent losers who are still hoping to land a last minute Hail Mary. It's like a loss, like a loss of a family member. I share their disappointment in Monumental's decision. The news has many folks wondering, is it really whether you win or lose or is it where you play the game? So what side of the river or team are you on? Thanks for staying up with us, everybody. I'm Jim Hadley. I'm Sean Yancey. Today's gigantic announcement is still sinking in. The Caps and Wizards are moving to Virginia, and tonight everyone has an opinion. So here are the four things you need to know about this move. Monumental Sports owner Ted Leonsis said the Capitals, the Wizards, and the company's headquarters will relocate to Alexandria, Virginia. Their new home will be at the heart of a $2 billion entertainment district in Potomac Yard. Virginia's governor promises the state will spend zero tax dollars on this project, but DC leaders insist they're still in the game and have more to offer Leonsis and his team. So this news may have come as a big surprise to some of the people in DC. Ironically, the basketball team, which is now the Wizards, back in the day, they were the Baltimore Bullets. And about 1975, they moved to Landover, Maryland, because they thought it was a better area to grow and they had a lot of land and everything else. And then they changed the name to Washington, and it wasn't in Washington. And then later when the, the uh, MCI Center <laughs> was made, and that, that was the early 2000s, I guess maybe 2004, when that building had opened in Chinatown, which was not really a good area, but they developed that area, put, started putting restaurants there, and people started slowly coming to that area. Now it seems like there are some businesses that have left. Uh, there's a Hooters that I used to go to all the time on 7th, and uh, it's empty. And they got a sale sign there for uh, future business to come there. So I don't know exactly what's happening in Chinatown that now the Wizards and the Capitals want to cross the river into Alexandria, Virginia and start anew in 2008. So the only business that would be left there would be the women's basketball team, but that's not strong enough to support that that area. I mean, they're still going to get some of the concerts and everything else, but uh, let's hear what the mayor has to say about this potential move. Held her own press conference today. The mayor striking a defiant tone but refusing to acknowledge the district's crime wave played a role in that decision. Tom Fitzgerald has that angle of the story. He spoke with the mayor tonight, so uh, what does she have to say about this, Fitz? Jim, there were a couple of pot shots at Virginia. At one point, Mayor Bowser saying that she didn't think that the Potomac Yards Wizards was a particularly good name for an NBA team. However, the mayor insisted today that she negotiated in good faith in what turned out to be a disappointing result with the news that both teams were now headed to Northern Virginia. But hours after Fox 5 reported that this move was underway, it was late last night when the mayor's office released their plan to keep the teams here at the Capital One Arena. It's essentially a $500 million refurbishment plan to redo the Capital One Arena, despite the fact that it has been widely reported that what the team actually needed was much more more than that. The fact of the matter is that a lot of people have been asking whether or not crime, which appears to be out of control in this city, played a role in this decision. The mayor today disagreed and described it as what she called a blip. 
I would characterize what they said to us, and I happen to agree with it, that uh, our experience with crime is kind of a blip. Uh, it's a phenomenon, and we can look back over the, the last several years and see a lot of contributing factors. Okay, so what is next for the Capitol, Walden Arena? Well, Ted Leonsa said today that he intends to keep operating it, that the WNBA's Washington Mystics will become the main attraction here, also with college basketball still being played. However, there's no getting around it. These two teams, an NBA franchise and an NHL franchise, leaving the arena to go over to Virginia, potentially and will likely be a devastating economic impact for Chinatown and Gallery Place. We asked the mayor in her third term now as mayor of the District of Columbia, there have been a lot of bad news lately, was this the low point? Is this the low point? Uh, certainly, we don't ever want to see a business go to one of our jurisdictions. We don't like to see jurisdictions trying to poach businesses from us, so it's disappointing. Well, there you have it. Now, the mayor would not say if this offer is still on the table if Monumental Sports goes ahead with this idea to make the Mystics the main target of uh, the attractions here. However, she did announce that there is going to be a task force now looking after the future of Chinatown and Gallery Place. One of the members, former Mayor Anthony Williams. Now, there's this other big piece of news that maybe the deal may not be done after all because the infrastructure has to change a lot that's really going to bank really on transportation on the metro to get a lot of people there and uh, they really don't have enough room road wise to have traffic coming in and out of that area but they should have really done their due diligence so this is going to have to be looked at by the city council of alexandria if they want this to happen but i mean the governor is you know touting that hey this is a monumental deal and this and that and the other but you know it's still sad to to see that you know this would happen i, I guess they would still keep the name washington wizards and washington capitals because it's right in alexandria and uh you know it won't it's just like new york <laughs> you know they they play in the Meadowlands over in New Jersey, when that's where they used to play, but now they're in uh, now Newark area, and they still use the New York, you know, uh, name Giants and the New York Jets. So they'll probably still keep the name Washington Wizards and Washington Capitals. But this is you know an interesting turn of events. So stay tuned. But this is what. They're saying about, you know, the infrastructure and everything else. Tonight, just one day after that big announcement on the Capitals and Wizards plan move to Alexandria, reality setting in some Virginia lawmakers are raising concerns about the plan. Yes, and they want to be heard. The big issue here, transportation. Still, though, others say the approval has a very long road ahead. Fox 5's Tom Fitzgerald tonight has details from Potomac Yard. You know, these transportation concerns for a new arena should come as no surprise. Fox 5 has been telling you that Metro right now is facing just a massive budget crisis. But also regional politics in Virginia, that could play a big role in all of this. Fox 5 spoke with several state officials, and they all say that you should caution all of this excitement around the announcement of Monumental Sports with Ted Leonsis as only the beginning step, not the end of this journey. In particular, Virginia's two U.S. senators, both happen to be former governors. Both say they're supporters of this project. They both share concerns about the transportation efforts with this arena. And one of them says more outreach should have been done with Alexandria's neighbors. The presence of the new Potomac Yard Metro site is a real key feature to this proposal. And, and obviously we're having a discussion right now about Metro funding and that Metro, Metro might have a funding deficit that it can only be addressed by cooperation between Maryland, D.C. and Virginia. I think those goals can be met, um, but there will be a lot of questions that will need to be answered by both the city and the Commonwealth um, 
if this project is to is to go is to go forward. But already some Hampton Roads lawmakers have already sent out warning signs. Senator Louise Lucas posting that some people want to build sports stadiums. I want tolls to disappear in Hampton Roads. This could be a precursor of a big fight on the way. David Ramadan is a former Republican House delegate in Virginia. Now he's a political science professor at George Mason University, and he says very old rivalries regionally could come into play when it comes to this arena. Northern Virginia always um, resented the rest of Virginia for contributing the most to the budget, but getting less than the contribution. The rest of Virginia resented Northern Virginia because Northern Virginia has the prosperity. And look, make no mistake, both the clock and the calendar come into play right now. Virginia's General Assembly goes back into session on January 7th. That's only 24 days away, and they've got a lot of work if they're going to make that groundbreaking that was talked about for 2025. We'll send it back to you. So if those teams do move to Alexandria, I don't think I'm going to go down there. That's much of that's that much more of a hassle. I normally take the Green Line uh, into uh, downtown DC from Greenbelt, uh, Maryland, but then I would have to then take another uh, metro to go over to Alexandria. So that's that much of a an issue. Maybe if you're from the DC area, it won't be that much of a hassle, but for me it would would be um i used to back in the day drive downtown dc and park i knew where to park over by the convention center parking at a certain time was free but of course things change over those 20 some years that you know you got to park and pay for parking all through the day through the night or whatever so it's it's a hassle and the teams are not that great especially the wizards so um but when they go over, and if they do go over Alexandria, I don't think I will be going down there. But if you are from D.C., let me know what you think and uh, what your perspective of this situation could be. There, Again, they want to, I guess the new thing is building these arenas and owning the land around it, the businesses. But I mean, that's what they basically did in in uh, Chinatown they built up that area you had the restaurants and the hotels nearby um, like I said in Alexandria you may not be able to do some of that stuff it would be have to be co uh, commuter base by the light rail they don't want all that traffic of cars coming in and out they probably won't have the infrastructures really to to make the roads that much bigger than what they are now plus people more move over there to get away from the hustle and bustle and they want more of a quiet area so then those people are upset for all the traffic and whatever comes with that anyway if you like this video please subscribe down below feel free to leave any comments about the possible move to alexandria virginia by the washington capitals and the wizards for sports fans and politicians alike stadium deals may be easier to make in your heart than in your head. At least that's what some economists are telling our I-team. Investigative reporter Ted Obert. He's been digging into the numbers behind this deal. If this deal comes together, it is a big day for Virginia. This is monumental. And in rolling out the plan for this massive sports and entertainment complex, Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin said it was not only good for sports fans, but a financial win for everyone. I pledged that any project like this would first and foremost be good for the Virginia taxpayer. And that's exactly what this project represents. The proposed Virginia deal announced today still has an awful lot of details to negotiate, but here's what we know of the basic outline. Governor Youngkin says this complex will cost $2 billion. A new state entity will issue bonds to pay for it up front. Monumental is putting $403 million in and will pay rent over 40 years. It's not a great use of money. J.C. Bradbury is an economist at Georgia's Kennesaw State University. All the research that has been done ever by economists, regional scientists, urban planners, they tend to find there's little to no economic impact from 
coaching professional sports teams or building new stadiums. The question isn't whether arenas attract crowds or cash or benefit. Of course they do. The question many economists like Austin Drucker ask is whether the money spent on stadiums would have been better spent on something else. Maybe that $2 billion could have instead be used to make something, you know, improve the roads, improve the schools. So that could have been used for something else. And then the question is, what would, what would that economic benefit have been? The I-team checked into NFL and NBA stadiums currently under construction or completed since 2010. According to published reports, at least 10 of the 16 we reviewed got public money, your dollars. Of those, only five have been entirely financed by private money. Commander's owner Josh Harris has said he plans to use private money to build a new arena for his basketball team in Philly. It's not an option that appears to be on the table today. This diversion of tax dollars, no matter where they come from, is a poor public investment. Now, again, this deal isn't done just yet. We'll be working for you throughout this process, keeping you updated with the information that matters to you. When we're not on the air, of course, get news updates in the NBC Washington app and on NBCWashington.com.